Many of you, including myself, are missing out on the best Dolby Atmos experience. Hey team, I'm Josh. In this video, we'll discuss the differences between the way Atmos is played and the options you have to get the best performance from your soundbar or AV receiver. Let's get to it. Nowadays, most people watch movies through the likes of Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Disney Plus. But there's a few different issues when it comes to this. First of all, storage costs are huge when you're talking about reaching a global audience. For instance, Netflix spends a billion dollars a year just on these storage costs so that they can have their films on servers around the world. That's about 7% of their overall revenue. So if they can compress that file to save space, they'll go for it. Now the second issue is internet speeds. These can vary wildly depending on where you live, whether that be rural and you're getting next to no speeds or you live in the city and you're getting gigabit fiber. These streaming platforms have to be able to cater for both customers. While well, you're asking, what does this have to do with Atmos? Well, currently Dolby have two different audio formats that support Atmos, Dolby Digital Plus and Dolby True HD. Dolby Digital Plus is what we call a lossy format. Essentially what that means is that they've taken out some of the information from the soundtrack, which shrinks the file size and makes it easier to send over the internet. Dolby True HD is a lossless format, which means it's a bit perfect representation of what the audio engineers mixed in the studio. Dolby Atmos rides on each of those formats and holds the metadata of where to place the sounds in a 3D space. I kinda see Dolby Atmos as the captain of the ship. It takes control when given the correct equipment and steers the objects to where they need to go based on what the audio engineer has instructed. Dolby Digital Plus and Dolby True HD can have up to 7.1 channels and the Atmos part can have up to 128 different objects within that 3D space. Dolby Digital is the other common audio format from Dolby, and if you see that, then unfortunately that's only available up to a 5.1 setup, so it doesn't do 7.1 or Dolby Atmos. I just want to quickly point out the difference between PCM and Bitstream. PCM instructs the player to decode the audio before sending it through, whereas Bitstream just sends it straight on through to the Dolby Atmos compatible AV receiver or soundbar. So if you think about it, the Blu-ray player actually isn't decoding any Atmos, all it's doing is sending it through to be decoded on the other end. Now let's look at the best ways to get true Dolby Atmos. The first way is through a Blu-ray player. Now that can be a normal one or a 4K version. The biggest thing is it needs to have that Dolby True HD logo, or you can have a look in the spec sheet. If your TV and sound system both have an eARC port, then just plug the Blu-ray player into one of the HDMI ends on the TV. If your TV doesn't have an eARC port, then use one of the HDMI ends on the sound system, whether that be a soundbar or AV receiver. But if you've got a Sonos Arc or Bose Soundbar 900 that doesn't have an HDMI in, then you can use the HD Fury Arcana, which will give you an eARC port. If it comes up saying Dolby Stereo or Dolby Digital 5.1, note that these formats aren't the same as True HD or Dolby Digital Plus. And if this is the case and you do have a compatible soundbar or AV system, then maybe reboot the system and see if it works properly the next time. Once that's all set up, make sure you turn on Bitstream in the Blu-ray settings. The second method of getting Dolby True HD is through either Plex or Kodi streamed to an Nvidia Shield. Plex I find to be the most user-friendly and more similar to a streaming service. Essentially what you're doing with these services is instead of storing the films on Netflix or Amazon servers, you're creating your own server at home and then Plex or Kodi is accessing those films and playing them to the TVs in your house. I'll leave a few links to videos in the description that explain this in more depth, but essentially you're ripping a Blu-ray disc to the NAS drive and then Plex is accessing those films and sending it to compatible TVs or devices around your house. Now I know many of you out there are saying, well I like my Netflix and my Amazon Prime because it's easy to use and I can get it on all my devices. Well that's the cool thing with Plex, is it too has a nice user interface and you can get it on all your devices as well. But then the upside also is that you can get those higher end Dolby True HD formats and video formats that you just can't get on streaming services. When it comes to the question of does this make a difference, the Dolby Digital Plus format with an Atmos layer runs on average around 500 kilobits per second, whereas the Dolby True HD format with an Atmos top runs on average around 6,000 kilobits per second. So that's 12 times more information can go through the Dolby True HD format. Whether that translates to your ears is really personal and depends on the type of equipment you have. I think if you have a high-end soundbar or AV receiver, then it will make more of a difference. So if you can, I highly suggest you get a hold of a Blu-ray player, PlayStation 5 or a Series X and give it a go for yourself. Compare it to the streaming version and then once you do, let me know your findings in the comments below. With that, 
I've got other cool videos in the pipeline aimed at getting the most out of your system. So if that interests you, then consider subscribing. Anyway, that's all from me. See you guys soon.